The phone that is designed to last 10 years. I have had the Fairphone 5 for one month and there is already a lot that I hate about it. In this video I will talk about the design and ergonomics, the display, battery and performance, camera, software and privacy, price and conclusion. All of the things will be from a perspective of a person who has owned and repaired a variety of different phones, cares about sustainability, the planet and recycling, who is an advocate for open source and privacy. Almost identical to the previous model Fairphone 4, same bad fingerprint sensor because of how uncomfortable it is to press and which is also not fast. The fingerprint sensor is one of the least comfortable ones I have ever used on any phone, but I might have not seen anything worse. Your mileage may vary. No headphone jack, the speakers are average. The feeling in the hand is somewhat of a premium device, but it's not ergonomic because the bezel is so small that you will accidentally be pressing it with the palm of your hand. The volume buttons are comfortable to press and make an audible click. The rear see-through plastic cover is a bit grippy and nice to touch. The aluminum sides are not grippy and sometimes feel like you will drop the phone. The edge of the screen is a bit sharp when rubbing with your finger over it. Overall, the phone doesn't feel comfortable to hold for me. 90Hz OLED display which by default is set to 60Hz refresh rate. According to the the brightness should be 800 nits. But looking at reviews by testers that doesn't seem to be true and it's a bit below that. I personally don't have the tools to test the brightness on my device. The adaptive brightness is just bad. The phone is never setting the wanted brightness automatically. This might be or already has been solved with an update. Also adjusting the brightness on screen is very annoying since most of the brightness gets adjusted just at the top end, making micro adjustments frustrating. I am not a social media consumer and I use this as a work phone. The phone is used just for calls and sometimes to watch a video or two. I also have most of the Google spyware disabled to reduce unnecessary drainage. The phone seems to last a week or something on standby, which is to be expected from an Android phone. For some reason it shows that the phone has went through only a single charge. Might be because I have set up the phone to not charge more than 84% so that I would extend how long the battery will live. This is not a phone that was designed for games. During benchmark testing when the device should have been utilizing all of its performance didn't even heat up. But then again, how much is this a proper test? During the benchmark the battery was peaking up to 9 watts. During idle at max brightness which was set manually and mobile data on, the phone consumes from 0.6 to 1.1 watts. The camera is just average, let's be honest. You don't buy a phone to use as a camera. The main lens has built-in stabilization, there is a slight delay after pressing the button to take a picture, the autofocus during video recording is pretty fast, the wide-angle lens is fairly wide. The usual G bloated stock ROM Android 13. Fairphone supports the users for installing custom ROMs and sells the phone with an unlockable bootloader, so it's up to the user how they want to use it. Since I use this phone as a company phone, I cannot flash a custom ROM. Android is an open source operating system based on Linux kernel. You make the phone how you want it to be. I have left the default launcher on, disabled all the G bloat in settings, slapped on an open board keyboard and it just works. When using a stock Android operating system you won't be able to take out all of the spyware, but you can minimize it. Fairphone operating system developers are really slow to push the latest versions and patches, so when comparing to competitors you will be the last one to get the new and great stuff, unless you use a custom ROM, for example Calyx OS. If you have the expectations that you are paying for a flagship but repairable phone, then be ready to be disappointed. I'm not hating on the phone, but that's the cost of fairness. This is a device that should last long and will easily be repaired by yourself, but the aluminum case is something that you cannot replace. 
which will get scratched if you don't wear a protective case. But then again, the protective case adds so much bulk and it's absolutely overpriced. The price doesn't seem fair to the user when considering the launch price, but if you look at it in the long run, if you use the phone for 8 years and replace only the battery, which would cost 40 euros without shipping, then it costs you 92.5 euros per year if you bought it for 700 euros. A premium costing average spec repairable unlocked bootloader average camera wielding smartphone which is making the right steps for a better world in terms of sustainability. It's lacking a headphone jack which the users have been requesting which was taken away since the Fairphone 4. There are 5G antennas which no one asks for and could have been replaced with something more relevant. Fairphone, the company, is making the biggest move towards real advancements in smartphones. If you want to support this, or so to say, invest, because you never know what decision they might make tomorrow, this is probably the phone to go for. The company has been making advancements with every release. In the end, you are the one who makes the decision if this is the phone you want to use. The future is truly in your hands. Thank you. This was Stone Lab.